there's a great deal of information you can learn by the artwork on commercially produced grave markers. Now, there are lots of different interpretations for the artwork and the symbolism, so uh, there would be different opinions on how to interpret that. But in general, um, different symbols mean different things about the lives of the people who are buried there or about the culture, cultural system to which they belonged. And a really neat uh, example of that would be looking at how the artwork changes over time. For example, some of the earliest grave markers that you find in the United States have uh, death's head or skull and crossbone motifs on the grave markers. And that's usually interpreted as an indication about the struggles that the early pioneers, the early settlers had uh, when they settled in this area, that life was not easy and death was not really seen as a break <laughs> from the, the toils of, of the everyday life. So some of the um, struggles that one had in one's lifetime would continue into the afterlife, and that's depicted in the, the skull and crossbone, um, skull's head motif. Once life became better for the settlers, their art motifs changed, and the skull and crossbones becomes out of fashion. No one wants that on their gravestones anymore and it turns to cherubs. The next major phase would be ange angelic looking depictions, which suggests that they were having a better time of it and were adapting better to this new life that they were experiencing uh, in the United States. And then uh, the next phase is the urn and willow. And urn and willow conveys a lot of information about belief in the afterlife because urn and, will, urn and willow is usually interpreted as eternity and serenity and more pleasant aspects associated with death. Uh, and um, that eternal nature of the soul is usually what's conveyed through that type of artwork. But there are other interpretations for uh, other kinds of artwork such as roses are usually interpreted with motherhood. And so that's a, a motif that you commonly see on adult female grave markers, although I have seen it on some adult male markers, so you can't um, assume that that's always the case. I think in those situations, it's sometimes the case where the family purchased a grave marker that was already available, that had the artwork already inscribed, and whether the motif really matched the sentiments they wanted to convey was less important than getting something that was readily available or something that they could afford. Uh, lambs are often associated with children, and uh, that's a common motif you see on children's grave markers, although I have seen lambs on adults as well, so again, you have to, have to make room for exceptions. Uh, people often put emblems related to the civic organizations in which they engage during their lifetime, so Masonic emblems are very common on grave markers. Uh, there's a couple, there are a couple grave, grave yards in Butler County we've examined where the family members were woodsmen, woodsmen of the America. Woodsmen of America, I guess is what the organization's called. And uh, there was one really gorgeous marker. The whole marker was the shape of a tree trunk. And then there was a panel that was inscribed that gave the birth and death dates and the, the name and the inscription and such. The kind of grave markers and the designs that they're putting on today's mark, uh, gravestones are just doing an incredible amount for future researchers because they're putting uh, images that indicate the occupation of the individual, the pastimes or hobbies of the individuals. I've seen you know, tractors and rifles and hunting dogs, uh, all, all different kinds of motifs that indicate the kinds of things that uh, related to that person's life. Images, I mean, there are photographs of the people now being placed on grave markers. So, I can only imagine um, how they're going to interpret that. I don't know if they're going to interpret it as, you know, uh, egocentric, that we were just so full of ourselves we had to convey everything about our lives on our markers, or if it was just a way to share information uh, with other people. So, I, you know, I'm interested in how people will interpret the cultural context of what that is in future generations. But at, on the individual level, there's a lot of information now that gets um, preserved in those grave markers when you have all that extra information.